All the stars have come in close Just to see you, I suppose And they're a-gleaming You must be dreaming And the sun has said goodbye With a twinkle in his eye He's left the ocean With sweet emotion We go dancing in Hello and welcome to episode 42 of Little Big Knits. This is a podcast primarily about knitting and my sharing of uh, my knitting journey with you. And uh, my name is Selma. I'm also known as Selma Knits on social media, on Instagram and Ravelry. And we also have a Ravelry group called Little Big Knits that you can come and join in if you're uh, so inclined. We have a um, knit, the knit alongs going there, a, an introductory thread. The show notes tend to be in there as well at this point in time. Uh, I'm coming to you from Ottawa, where I live with my family and our cat, Yoda. And uh, yeah, hello, hello on this November day. Uh, welcome to the podcast. There were quite a few subscribers since the last podcast, so hello and welcome to the podcast. And those of you that are returning, hello again, and thank you so much for coming back. Today is... Uh, a November day, as I said, we have had a really, really warm weather for November. Um, it is about 20 degrees outside. In fact, I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to be able to wear my woolies for the entire episode, but uh, it is also a bit grey. We've just had a week of really beautiful weather. It's been incredible uh, for November. This is quite unusual, um, but as of tomorrow, we're going back into the single digits, uh, single digit weather and um, yeah, back to sort of more normal programming for November. Most of the leaves have fallen. The tree outside my window, which last time was full of yellow leaves, is now bare. And um, yeah, and we're getting ready for winter. So today I have a rather full episode. I normally have two pages of notes and I actually have almost four because today in addition to showing you the regular stuff what I what I've knit what I'm wearing what I'm making I am also going to do a shawl share so to speak and share with you uh, some of the shawls that I gravitate towards the most and then I'll also have a giveaway, which I will be announcing at the end of the podcast. I'm very excited about this. It's a beautiful giveaway. So uh, we'll see you at that end of the podcast to talk about that. Right, so a couple of little reminders. Uh, we have two knit-alongs going. We've got the Garment Galore Cal 2020, which is ending actually both pod, both um, knit alongs are ending at the end of December. Um, we've got the Garment Galore Cal and it's the About Time uh, Cal as well. The Garment Galore Cal hashtag Garment Galore Cal 2020 if you're so inclined on Instagram to uh, to join in. Um, it is all about garments, so vests, sweaters, cardigans, skirts, uh, so forth, not accessories. And the It's About Time cardigan, um, It's About Time knit along is about um, knitting things or crocheting as well um, with yarn or patterns that you've had in your stash for over a year. So things that have been languishing there, looking at you, staring at you longingly, but not getting picked up by you are finally getting picked up and you're either knitting with the pattern or the yarn or both in some cases. So uh, those are both going on until the end of December. You are welcome to join still at any time. Um, there are chatter threads for both and then there are finished object threads as well. Sometimes people post their finished objects in the chatter thread, which is great, but don't forget to post them also in the finished object thread and it's one post per item. So welcome along for those. Then I also wanted to uh, talk briefly about the Westboro hat. Since I announced this design on the last episode, there was a wonderful, wonderful number of purchases. I just want to thank everybody so much. This is the hat that I, I showed you last time that I had published. 
this hat called the Westboro hat and uh, for the first week um, I was going to be giving all the proceeds from the sale of this hat to Harmony House, uh, which is a an organization here in town that supports women and children who have been uh, had to escape sort of violent situations. And I was able to send a thousand Canadian dollars to Harmony House, which totally exceeded my expectations. So I just want to thank you because. Um, I know that a lot of the sales came from the viewers and um, really it was it was amazing to be able to send such a large check or, or <laughs> e-deposit I guess to, uh, to Harmony House and so I really really want to thank you for your enthusiasm about the hat for the projects that I've already seen and and just for supporting that I really really appreciate it a lot I actually think I might even even do it again at some point in the future because it really was a wonderful way to raise money for for charity and for a good cause um, so thanks so much um, if you do knit the hat and post it on Instagram, please be sure to use the Westboro hat hashtag. Um, I'd love, love, love to see your hats. I've had a couple of people get in touch with me about questions um, or comments, so I've really appreciated that as well. And this hat is for sale on Ravelry, but I've also published it on Etsy. So if you are more inclined to go to Etsy, I have a shop there that has been pretty much dormant for the last few years because I used to make project bags. Um, and then I stopped that because I basically didn't see my family if I, if I started making project bags because they do take up a lot of time. So I stopped making project bags, but the shop is still there and it's called Little Creek Designs CA. So if you would rather purchase your pattern on Etsy rather than Ravelry, you're, you're welcome to go there as well. And uh, so yeah, so thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. Um, and I've had people share them in the Ravelry group as well, which has been really great. I just, it's so exciting. Now I understand um, when designers say they just love seeing people's projects. It really is so thrilling and uh, exciting to see people knitting with uh, with your design and I'm sure it's the same for for yarn dyers or, or other creators as well so yeah so thank you so much for that incredible reception my my first pattern let's see if it's the last all right on with the show so first what I'm wearing today I'm wearing probably my most worn item. I made this vest in 2014, so it's been around for six years, which obviously if you've uh, made something six years ago, you're more likely to have worn it more than something you made a year ago. But uh, I just, I could wear this literally every day. <laughs> There's something about this vest that I just love. Um, and in fact, I used to wear it with a purple shirt and the shirt got this bizarre rip down the sleeve. And then I was wearing it with, um, a white shirt or a light gray shirt but I really just like wearing it with a purple shirt for some reason so um, I found one recently online and I'm now back to wearing this vest with a purple shirt underneath it and so this has become a, a little bit of a uniform for me over the last six years this is called the top down let lopi vest I think it's actually it's a free pattern um, and it's more about providing this chart in a top-down version because I think that this is actually originally designed by somebody else and it's a bottom-up perhaps it's it's a I haven't even checked to be honest what the original version if it's a free pattern if it's done by a yarn company or a designer I'm not quite sure but a person named Chris Wass uh, created the chart for this for a top-down version with the increases and I think there are some instructions for the rest of the uh, item but I just kind of created my own thing um, on the edges I put uh, seed stitch as opposed to a ribbing or garter and I really really liked that over the years and um, I used a much smaller um, needle for for the ribbing which I always do I find sometimes patterns don't tell you to use a smaller needle but I think it's always a good idea to use a smaller needle because they're more or less or they're less likely to flare out if you use a smaller needle 
So I'll just stand up to give you an idea of what this looks like. Um, there is the ribbing down there. I had done a little bit of waist shaping at that point. Um, and really, I kind of used leftover yarns for this vest. I had made a sweater in this purple cascade yarn, um, and I had leftovers. And then I believe the other yarns are a combination of cascade or Galway heather. And um, this was my first color work, um, and it just worked out really really well. I don't remember grappling with it as much as I do now so I have a feeling that I've become a little bit too uh, analytical or put too much mental energy into my color work but um, I just went along and knit this and it worked out just beautifully. There's a tiny little bit of these purple stitches here that sometimes don't come through quite as much because I think the floats weren't quite long enough but overall it's really good. This pink yarn was yarn that I had given a friend. It's Galway Heather. And then I said, would you happen to have any left of that yarn? Because I think I'd like to put it in a sweater. So she gave me a ball of it uh, to be able to incorporate it into, into the sweater. So yeah, I just absolutely love this. Um, it's really cozy, it's comfy. And I am finding during this COVID time where we're teleworking um, that I'm more drawn towards my vests or my cardigans rather than my sweaters. So I think being at home wearing a sweater some of the time is just a little too warm. Um, whereas at the office, often the temperature can be a little bit cooler and um, you know, and I'm outside walking to work and so forth. So at home, I've been more drawn to my vests and my cardigans than my sweaters. And this one, of course, because I just absolutely love it. So that's what I'm wearing today. Can't guarantee that I'm gonna wear it for the entirety of the podcast because it is quite warm. So before I share with you my foes, I think I'm just gonna have my finished objects. I should say I'm gonna have a little sip out of my, my cup of tea and Gertie came in to say, hello, my little chicken mug that I love so much. I think this was from Brown Bunny Pottery that I got at Rhinebeck. I'm not sure she has much of an online presence, but I really love her work and if I get to go to Rhinebeck again, I will definitely be coming home with a, you know, sister mug for Gertie because I just, I love her work or something else in her, in her, um, in her stall because she has all kinds of things like butter dishes and bowls and all kinds of things. So I just love this mug and everybody knows her name is Gertie because it's a little chicken just in case you can't see. There she is. <laughs> One must be silly from time to time or more often than not. So what did I finish? Well, I finally finished the rug sweater and perhaps what I'll do is do a little change, wardrobe change, so you can see it back in a flash. Ta-da, here I am again. So this is the rug sweater you've if you've been around for a while, you've heard me talk about it before. It's a free pattern on Ravelry by Junko Okamoto. Okamoto, I think it is. And uh, there are over a thousand versions of this sweater made by people. It's very popular. Um, it's been made by many people, lots of very inspiring versions. Now, you heard me um, share some frustrations because I just was not really enjoying the color work on this. And I think there are a couple of reasons actually for not enjoying the color work on this. One, the floats were very long and I was knitting it on a shorter circumference needle, which in hindsight, why didn't I just change the needle? Um, but the floats are very long. And so that, that adds a certain level of complexity because you have to carry them along and you have to be sure the floats are long enough. I think another factor that made the color work a little bit challenging is that the two yarns that I used, well actually what I should say is the main yarn and the other yarns that I used for the color work were very different. And I think that that also created uh, a little bit of a dystopian, <laughs> I don't know why that's the word that wants to come out, uh, experience. So the yarn that I used for the, for the sweater, the gray is a 
fabulous yarn that I absolutely love by Batten Kill Fibers in Greenwich, New York. I was there last year um, uh, for a uh, retreat and uh, we went to the Batten Kill Fibers mill, had a wonderful tour of the mill. In fact, I think I posted about it in here on YouTube in my episode that it would have been sort of like last May if you happen to want to go back and watch it. And this is a Corydale kind of um, sort of chunky weight, Aaron chunky weight uh, yarn. It's wonderful. It's got a lot of bounce to it. Um, it was an absolute delight to work with. I absolutely love it. And uh, I used up almost, well, I used up uh, a tiny bit of the last skein. So there's enough to perhaps make a hat for somebody, which I may do. But then for the color work, I used a combination of Let Lopi, which is not a bouncy yarn. I would say it's more of a sort of, it's a sort of a single ply yarn. So it has kind of like a more of a smooth kind of skating sort of, I feel like there's a, a smooth kind of elongated um, experience to it. So very different experience. And I was double stranding the uh, Let Lopi with other yarns from my stash. So those yarns ended up being very taut, whereas the, this yarn was very bouncy, and so it created a rather weird experience. Other mods that I did for this sweater were that I made the, the, this little bit here of color work, um, I did not do on the bottom. Um, it was supposed to be mirrored down there, and primarily I was just kind of done with the color work and I just didn't want to do it. And I also added ribbing to this sweater. In the original version, they're rolled hems. It's a rolled hem at the sleeve and at the body, but I added a three by one ribbing to both the body and the sleeves. I also sort of changed the decreases here. There, It's a bit more of a dramatic decrease I found on the pattern, so I just did my own thing there, to be honest. I just sort of calculated about how often I should probably uh, do the decreases and just kind of went along with that and I figured the sleeves are not a lot of work if I was completely wrong then I could redo it but it pretty much worked out and um, the other thing that I did differently was that I did not do the, the same number of cast ons underneath because it is a top down so when you are separating for the body and the sleeves you usually do some cast ons underneath uh, and I did half the number of cast ons because I found it to be a rather large number of cast ons and I think I also um, <clears throat> I think I also might have had less stitches for the sleeves and put more stitches on the body because I wanted the sleeves to be not tight but not quite as loose as they could be in the pattern. Um, and because of the color work you just have to make sure that you've got the right number of stitches down here. <clears throat> this happens to me every time I podcast. So without further ado let me show it to you. It turned out way better. I was worried about the puckering of the color work after finishing it and, and wetting it and laying it flat, it's grand. There's still a teeny, 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 weeny little bit of puckering here and there, but overall it's great. You're not going to get a fabulous picture of it here, so I did post on Instagram um, pictures of it. So what I'll do is I'll put a couple here so that you can you can see what it looks like. Um, we've had such warm weather. I did wear it out one day, but I had to take it off because it was just too warm. But going forward, uh, hopefully this weekend, I'll wear it on a walk somewhere out in the forest. Um, it's turned out great. Despite all of my reservations, I'm really quite pleased with it. Um, obviously, this is a, a, a sweater to wear out. It's not something that I would wear in the house or to the office per se. Um, although I usually make sweaters thinking about work or social, you know, like a not necessarily a party, but just something that I would wear to look nice. This one is really about, about being outside and uh, uh, walking in the forest. And I think it's going to fulfill that purpose. So that's great. So this is the rug sweater by Junko Okamoto and knit in um, batten kill fiber yarns primarily. Very, very, very nice yarn. Really like her stuff. I have another uh, sweater quantity that I bought from batten kill as well, a Shetland yarn uh, in a fingering wake. So, so very different from this one that um, 
I've been thinking a lot about and hopefully we'll get to soon. All right, back for the next finished object. And I was knitting it last time as well and I think I had uh, gotten past the halfway mark and that was the Venezia shawl by Hochi Locatelli that I was knitting as part of the uh, Hochi Fall Cal um, and which goes on until the end of November. You had to sign up for it I think before the end of August and um, and I committed to making this shawl which was great. Um, and so here is the finished Venezia shawl blocked and already warm when the war weather was a little cooler and uh, it's just been absolutely lovely. It's a one skein shawl. Mind you, it was a slightly larger skein. I would say I think it was a, a little over 100 grams and I used just about all of it. There's a little bit of a nugget which is in, in one of those bowls up there now. The yarn that I used was um, Roots and Rain, which is a, a yarn company owned by a woman named Donna here in Ottawa who does natural dyeing. And this is her singles base, a base which I think is called the Tin Roof Singles. And this particular yarn was dyed with Eastern Brazil wood. And it's just a stunning, stunning pink. So pretty. Um, the yarn was an absolute delight to work with. Um, Donna's yarns are usually um, non-superwash, but the Singles is a superwash base. And um, yeah, her, her stuff is just gorgeous. So check her out, Roots and Rain. Um, her yarns are beautiful and she's got some yarns right now that I'm really, really <laughs> considering buying. Just really beautiful stuff. Um, so the only mod that I did to this was uh, that I used 4 millimeter needles instead of 4.5. The pattern calls for 4.5 so that it's an airier, um, a slightly airier project. But because I wanted this to be more of a scarf than a shawl to be able to wear, you know, kind of like this under a coat, um, then I was, I was fine with it being a little bit denser than the pattern calls for. So um, I used four millimeter needles and the pattern does advise you to knit as many repeats as you want to get to halfway through your skein. So because my skein was slightly larger, I ended up making one extra repeat on the increases and one extra repeat on the decreases. And uh, so it ended up being perhaps slightly larger than if I'd had only a, um, 100 gram skein but um, this was a pattern that was really enjoyable I think you'll recall if you've been around uh, it took me a while to get into the lace pattern um, because there's sort of there's the the right side where you're doing the lace part but then the wrong side there's something slightly different happening every every row between the the, the knits and the pearls and uh, it really took me a while to get used to that. So I have to say in the beginning, I was wondering if I was going to enjoy knitting this scarf, but then once I got into it, I totally enjoyed it. Totally, totally enjoyed it. I think, I was thinking, because I'm not a gigantic fan of color work, I like doing a little bit of yoke um, or, you know, a band of color work, but I don't think I would ever knit a complete garment in color work. I don't think so, unless it was something small, like every once in a while. Um, I'm also not a huge fan of cables. I, I like some cable, but to knit a whole like big Aran cable style sweater, I have done it in the past. Um, I might do it, but it's not something that I absolutely adore doing and I'm just like all about the cables. I really like textured patterns and I really like lace. Um, I do love lace. There's something really satisfying in lace and you just get into the rhythm and it's just it's just a pleasure to do so that's something that I tend to gravitate towards so that's my second finished object for the day now the other finished object I have is something just quick I decided that November was going to be about getting some Christmas knits done um, and so I didn't have the intention of doing this but then um, I found the yarn and I thought, okay, maybe I will. So I had made my son Yaro a hat a couple of years ago out of some blacks, um, some drops, what was it called? 
Drops Alpaca in this black colorway. Just a very, very black yarn. And uh, he lost it. So um, I found the yarn the other day. I was looking for yarn in my yarn closet and I was like, oh, there's that black. So I asked him if he would like another hat and he said, sure. He didn't want a slouchy, which I had made last time. He wanted something more like, you know, like a, just a, a beanie type thing with a folding brim. So that's what I made for him. And um, I just cast on, I looked up what I had done last time. I had cast on 110 stitches with 3.5 millimeter needles um, and uh, went along and then did the decreases. This time I decided to do the decreases a little differently and as you can see, I did a four square type of thing. I looked up, Jared Flood has a free pattern. Um, I'll put the name down here because I can't remember, I think it's like the four square hat or something like that. So I looked up what uh, he was proposing you do for that kind of a decrease method. And that's what I did. Because I've always liked that hat by Jared Flood. So this is just the, 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 the spare thread there. And I think it worked out well. Um, I probably should have done the ribbing uh, rib a little longer because when you fold it, you see the rest of the hat. But overall, I think that this will be fine. Where's the... There we are. For what my son wants, which is just, you know, this kind of a fisherman's cap type of thing. As you can see, black is not my color. I'm not a big fan of black. Especially not such a stark black. But... Anyway, it worked out great and it was easy peasy. Uh, I really love knitting with alpaca, so I was just wanting to knit this up rather quickly. The Drops Alpaca is a very nice alpaca. Um, alpaca just has such a buttery quality to it that it's, it's a joy to knit. So yeah, so I finished that actually last night and uh, we'll sew in the ends and get it uh, ready for uh, for Christmas. It was actually being housed in this bag by Paradise Island Bags, which is Patricia, who's a friend of mine, and she makes these wonderful silk screened bags, and I've had this one for a while, and it's a great sock or one skein project size, so if you want to check her stuff out, go for it. Beautiful. <clears throat> Beautiful work that she does. So that's it for finished objects, actually. So what you're going to notice is that all of my projects are small projects. Um, it's sort of like I dedicated the month of November to making small projects for, for Christmas. So I've got some hats and some socks on the needle. Z on the needle, z. So the first uh, is this, which you have seen before. I showed you these socks the last time that were in this bag that my friend Sue of the Distant Stitches podcast um, made for me for my birthday. I finished the one sock, so I've got a half object, I suppose. Um, last time, this is the Knit Picks Felici yarn sock in their Nassau colorway. I really like it. And Sue had actually given this to me for my birthday, I don't know what years ago or so so it's about time that I use it um, so yeah so I finished the first sock which I just did as a toe up sock um, with 64 stitches and uh, what I the Wendy D Johnson basic gusset heel which is my my go-to um, for my socks I, I really like that for for me so I tend to use them most of the time and I've started the second sock and I've gotten part way up and uh, hopefully we'll have those finished in the next couple of weeks. So that's one. Um, I'm still not 100% sure who I'm giving those to. I may give them to my mother or I may give them to a friend because they seem to have her name on them, but I haven't quite decided. Then I also cast on another pair of socks. These ones for Alejandro because he does wear the wool socks that I made him. He has he has three pairs but he really wears two of them. One pair tends to be his have become his bed socks and um, and then the other two he alternates so I thought he really should have another pair. Um, I, I My personal opinion is that you should have 
a minimum of five pairs of wool socks in rotation, especially if you wear them all the time. Um, I wear my socks pretty much every day, uh, except when we're having a warm snap like this, from October until April. So if I only had two pairs, they would get worn down very quickly. But if you have a minimum of five, then they're in rotation quite nicely and they're gonna last longer. Um, of course, I have more than five pairs, but my aim is to get Alejandro a pair every year so that he is, you know, at five uh, sooner rather than later. So in the early summer, I think, I got a, um, a wonderful package from Johanna from Finland. And uh, in that package was this skein of Novita Venla, in what colorway is this? 861, which is a 7525 wool nylon blend. Um, in, and I wanted to make something for Christmas. I thought I was going to make something for myself, but then I decided I would make this for Alejandro. Um, and I think he will enjoy. He doesn't know that I'm knitting on these. I try to knit on them when he's not around. Um, so it's this. Uh, Oh, there's something very Canadian about this somehow too. It reminds me of the Ottawa Senators hockey team. Uh, reminds me of Tim Hortons. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm knitting this up for him. Uh, for him, I am using 72 stitches. And uh, for him, I don't use the basic gusset heel that I use for myself. I use a heel flap that I'll probably doing, be doing some sort of um, reinforcement on. He's very hard on his knits. Uh, so I need to make sure that I use good uh, solid yarn for him and uh, and make sure that things like the heels are reinforced uh, because he can destroy his knits pretty quickly. In fact, I made him the Jaden sweater a couple of years ago and um, out of uh, Harrisville tweed in their worsted weight base and he's just about ripped the entire ribbing. I don't know what he does with his tits, but he's so rough on them. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's incredible. So anyway, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this yarn, uh, Novita yarn, which is Finnish yarn, and, and I'm expecting it to be, you know, strong wearing and long lasting. Um, I'm curious to see how it is. So I am making these for him. Uh, with the 72 stitches and 2.25 millimeter needles. And to keep it finished, because Novita is a Finnish yarn company, I was cleaning something out of my mother's room at the retirement home where she is, and I found this little bag um, which says sauna kassi on it, which means sauna bag, and uh, or sauna bag. And uh, so I guess you would put your I'm not sure what you put in here, your shampoos and, and stuff like that when you're going to the sauna or perhaps your, your personal effects and you would put them on a hook outside of the sauna. Um, so I saw this and I thought, well, that would be an adorable little project bag. So that is what I'm using it for. So that small project is in there and those will be a present for Alejandro for Christmas. Alejandro also needs another hat. Um, so I decided to cast one on for him um, I was recently uh, supporting a friend in her knitting her first hat for somebody and she'd never knit a hat before so I sort of walked her through the project and as she was knitting it I was thinking I really should make one for Alejandro like that as well. So uh, I'm doing the same type of thing. I have this mystery alpaca that my friend Kate uh, gave me a while ago and there's a whole bunch of it and I've never used it. Um, and I kept thinking, I should really at least make a hat for Alejandro out of it. So this is what I'm using. This is hat that Kate's mother had gotten in Peru, perhaps, in the 1970s, I think. And it's been sort of kicking around. Um, and Kate had it from her mom. Her mother had started a sweater for her father, and then it didn't work out. So it got ripped out, and the yarn was just sitting there, and she gave it to Kate. And then Kate gave it to me. So... Um, uh, <laughs> Here it is, and I'm making a hat for Alejandro. And I have cast on using, I think, 3.25 millimeter needles, if I recall. I cast on, with the mystery alpaca, uh, 130 stitches. 
Now, unlike the Drops Alpaca, this is actually not that soft. It's quite hairy. I don't know if you can see the hairiness of it. Um, and it's, it's not as buttery soft as the other one is, so I'm hoping this is going to be okay for him. Um, I think it will be, and I will be washing it after, and that'll probably have an impact on, on how it feels, but um, it's not quite as buttery as the other one is. But um, yeah, so my intention is to make a long rib for this one, unlike the hat for Yaddo, it has a long rib, so when it doubles on itself, um, and then I'll just finish the top with the stocking net. And I think I might do the four, the four corner decreases as well. I quite like that. I uh, haven't quite decided, but um, there it is, very simple. And I just love my stitch marker. Kitty cat, can you see that? There she is. <laughs> that my friend Sue had made for me at one point. Um, and this is being housed in a uh, just this little sack from the Edinburgh Yarn Festival when I was there three and a half years ago. And then the last project on my needles, also something that I've cast on very recently, and it's being housed in this bag by Jenna Rose. You guys have seen this bag before. I love her work, Jenna Rose. She's on Etsy and she just does her own silk screened fabrics and they're almost always linen and just a beautiful quality. Um, I've had this bag for a long time and it's got some wonderful pins on it. Um, I feel like knit this one says and gotten them from different places. So in here is the Oslo Hat Mohair Edition which is a design by Petite Knits. Petite Knits uh, also desi has designed so many very simple patterns. Uh, she designed the anchor uh, sweater that I made last summer, um, and as well as the, this, this pattern. <clears throat> so I am making the Oslo Hat Mohair Edition. Uh, which is a simple pattern, although it's got some little twists and turns that are a little bit mind-boggling, and I'm, in, at, I'm at the mind-boggling stage right now, um, but I think I'm on the right track. And um, it is basically a hat with this double brim on it um, that's also a cap. And I'm making this for somebody I don't quite know who yet. So I've just put the two sides of the brim together and I'm starting now the regular hat portion. And um, yeah, it's, it's great. It's beautiful actually. I can see myself making another one in the future. I am making this out of a yarn that's been in my stash for quite a long time. Uh, so this is another It's About Time. This is Madeline Tosh Light. So her single ply or the single ply, I think uh, Madeline Tosh is no longer just an individual, it's a rather large company at this point. Um, and I think it was taken over by somebody, but I have no re recollection who. But anyway, this is the single ply in the Time colorway, which is this, this green, kind of slightly minty. It's quite lovely. And then I found some Drops Kid Silk at Wabi Sabi, my local yarn store, which I adore and love. Um, and in this green that I just was immediately drawn to, it's color 34. And so I am putting these two together. This has got a bit more blueiness to it and this has got a little bit more yellowiness to it. And it's creating this fabric, which is actually really beautiful. So there you go. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to show it to you next time. One thing that I need to show you though on it is a stitch marker that I got from Boho Knits. Um, so if you look at Boho Knits online, she's on Instagram as Boho Knits as well, but it's this little Venus of Willendorf, Venus of Willendorf stitch marker, which I just, I just, I'm so in love with it. When I saw it, I had to get myself one. Um, it's a wonderful statue and I remember in art history reading about it and recently I finished a book called Deacon King Kong. I had 
read it part of it in the spring but then had to return it to the library or listen to it because of course I'm always listening to books and I was able to get it again so I finished the book which I really enjoyed I'm not going to talk about it today I'm not going to have time to talk about books today but maybe next time um, but the Venus of Willendorf the statue is featured in that book and so when I saw this I just thought I absolutely have to get the Venus of Willendorf so there she is. It's actually great because it's it's 3D. So there's the front, but there's the back with the bum bum and everything. <laughs> so that is the Oslo Mohair Edition, which I'm just enjoying working on because, of course, it's got mohair in it, so Selma likes it. And so that is it for my knitting. And once I have finished all these small projects, I have no idea what I'm going to make next. Um, I think I had um, mentioned to you that uh, I, um, my mind is just full, full, full of ideas. And so I really don't know what I'm going to knit next. Will it be another color work sweater? Will it be a vest? Because I have a vest in mind. I've been wanting a cream colored vest for a really long time. And so I started swatching um, with some cream yarn that I have. Um, I don't know what I'm going to make next, so we'll have to see. I've also got an advent calendar. Uh, my friend Kate sent me an advent calendar this year, and I think we've decided that we're going to be knitting um, an advent cardigan together. So that'll be in the future, but I'm kind of trying to figure out what else will be in the near future, and there are so many ideas going through my mind, so let's see. But for now, let's move on to the shawl extravaganza. Okay, I had to take my vest off because it's just too warm in here. So, I have chosen seven shawls to show you. Um, I actually don't know how many shawls I've made, but I've made more than seven. There are quite a few, and I'm looking over there because there's just this big heap of shawls. And what I'm finding is that I'm not wearing a lot of shawls right now because I'm, we're not outside a whole lot. Um, but I do have shawls that the earliest one is from 2015 um, and so basically what I decided to do today I thought okay I'm not gonna pick my favorite shawls because I couldn't tell you which one is my absolute favorite shawl um, different shawls have different aspects that I really like about them sometimes it's the shape sometimes it's the memory sometimes it's the the color um, but I thought I would show you some of the shawls that I gravitate towards the most too and I would say the shawl that I have probably worn the most is my, it actually looks like I should probably, could probably use a little soaking, because is my Exploration Station, which is here. It's got the fold in it. I've worn this Exploration Station a lot. It's actually called the Canadian Exploration Station because all the yarns in here are Canadian yarns. Um, so I made this in 2016. This is the Exploration Station. It's a design by Stephen West. And uh, this was such an absolute joy to knit. It was a fun knit. I am sure, I think, okay, I've only made two Stephen West shawls and the other one is also in the pile. Um, but his, his work is just so much fun to make. And he explains things so well. So even though you think, oh my gosh, like how am I gonna do that? He explains things very well. Um, and he often supports them with little YouTube videos and things like that. And so there were some interesting techniques in here. There was brioche, which I had, uh, I had never done. Um, this is brioche, this section right here. Um, there are these sort of short row type things happening. Um, it was just so fun. Why do I love this shawl? Well, one of the reasons I gravitate towards a shawl is that it's actually very, very easy to wear because it sits really, really well on your shoulders. Um, so it's one that I've just gravitated towards. I, I would often have it at home um, in the evenings if I got chilly. And, um, and yeah, I've really liked it. Um, I've always wanted to make one in different colors. Um, I really, really love this color combination, but I thought it would be nice to have one in all sort of pale colors or um, something in sort of more earthy tones or 
but it hasn't happened yet but we'll see if it does so the, and the whole thing started with this green yarn which somebody had sent me um, at the time I was uh, occasionally podcasting with the two tangled skeins and a viewer I believe had sent me this wonderful yarn which is a green by Tannis Fiber Arts. Um, uh, Tannis Fiber Arts comes from Montreal and so I then ended up finding this beautiful salt and pepper yarn. It's called Salt and Pepper by Riverside Studios and then this purple yarn is by uh, and Riverside Studios is actually just here outside of Ottawa in the Gatineau area um, and then this sort of purpley color is Macaron uh, by uh, Julia Slain in one of her bases and and then the gray um, is also a Julia Slain I think I think it's like shining armor or something like that um, so this is a shawl that was it was a delight to wear I loved the yarns and the shape is just great. So I'll often wear it also kind of in this sort of style. And it's just, it's warm, it's great, it's a fabulous shape in this style. The tails are long enough that it stays very comfortably. Um, it's just a really good, really good shape. So I would say that this is probably one of the shawls that I have um, used the most. The second shawl that I want to show you um, is one that I absolutely adore as well. It was also made in 2016 and it's the Calera by Amba O'Brien. So it's this uh, garter stitch shawl that starts at one end. Actually, I don't remember if that's the beginning or if the other one was the beginning. And it has this sort of... Um, spine up one side and it's all garter stitch I gotta say it was a little bit boring to knit um, but I've just loved it uh, I love the simplicity of it um, the geometry of it I love the yarns that are used the lighter gray is a, an alpaca yarn it's by Queensboro Farms which I believe is here in Ontario I don't know if they're still producing yarn and the darker, more variegated sort of gray-blue uh, is by Seattle Sky Dye Works. And it's a wool silk blend. And um, I think the gray was one that I won or got in a de-stash. And the blue was a gift from Seattle, uh, Seattle Sky Dye Works. So, uh, and this is one that I also have just really, really loved. I, I love gray. It's one of my favorite colors, I would say, or a color that I gravitate towards a lot. But this is just really great under a coat. Um, it's not too, too big, so it doesn't take up too much space. Um, and I, I've often worn it with a gray wool coat that I have, but it's just really, really lovely and um, also you know, although it's not that deep, it does have a nice, you know, an, enough volume to it to cover your shoulders and your back. So I just, I love this one. And even though it was slightly tedious to make, uh, not nothing terribly tedious, and it's just very repetitive. Um, and, uh, you know, it just, it sort of felt like it was just going on and on and on. But it was easy and lovely and very effective. So I would actually make it again, um, you know, just because I really love the final product and it can be one of those sort of simple meditative types of knits. Really, really love this one a lot. So it's the Calera by Amba O'Brien. And of course, I always write things down here at the bottom at some point. So, um, you know, I know you're probably working on something, but you can look up too to see the name if you want. So the third shawl that I was going to show you is one that I've usually kept at the office. I used to have a very, very cold office in my old job. And I did I mention this to you last time? I can't remember now. But um, so I had some shawls there. And this is one that I made in 2015. So this is actually the oldest of the shawls. It's called the Shailin by Layla Raven. And I made it in Estelle Arequipa yarn, which is a wool alpaca nylon blend, I believe. 
and oops, I've got it backwards there. And it's a very simple black shawl. It's a nice triangle in the sense that it's it's got a good width to it, so it also sits nicely. If a triangle is more deep than wide, then you, you, it's more difficult to wear. And so this was just a really good shawl to have at the office, um, sort of a, a little bit more of a conservative shawl. Um, I, I had three shawls at work that I would wear, and, um, I, and I'm showing two of them because they're the ones that I wore the most. But, um, and there's something so classic about this shawl. It's black, first of all, but there's something kind of, I don't know, it just feels very classic, very elegant. Um, and it's just been an absolute delight and the yarn has been wonderful. And it's a thin shawl, but because of the alpaca, it's quite warm and it just has this very sort of simple lace happening. So this is another shawl that I've gravitated towards a lot over the years. The other shawl that I had at the office that I really loved wearing, it was all it was made in 2016. It looks like 2016. There are quite a few shawls here from 2016. It looks like 2016 was a big shawl knitting year for me. So this was a shawl that I did a test knit for uh, Kristen Lehrer. Um, and this is her Vildesmeer a Wild Sea shawl that she designed in 2016 and I test knit for her and I made it out of Mirasol Nuna. So Mirasol Nuna is more of a sport weight yarn. This was supposed to be a one skein fingering weight yarn. So I made it in a sport weight yarn and it ended up being a little bit bigger, which was great. Um, and I just, I so enjoyed making this shawl. Um, it was so much fun to make. It's got this very simple repetitive lace uh, for the body of the shawl and then an applied border. Um, and I just loved this this sort of like cockle shell type thing happening there and it was so much fun to knit. Um, I believe her version also has beading on the edge uh, which I did not do at the time but I love the shawl, I love the size and this is a um, and I love the color because I think that this sort of gray blue stormy color is is definitely one of my favorite colors um, and this yarn is a wool silk blend I believe but it's a bit of a lighter yarn it's not quite as warm as a pure wool or the wool alpaca so this one I tended to wear um, when I didn't need something quite so warm but I've always really, really liked it. And oh, it's just such a beautiful color and such a beautiful shawl. Um, geez, that's another one that I'd make again. They were always torn between wanting to make things again or moving forward and making new things, right? But yeah, so this is one that I really liked. Kristen has great designs. I've, I've uh, waxed poetic about her designs in the past, but yeah. So this is the Vildes Mirror by Kristen Lehrer, knit in Mirasol Nuna. Another shawl that I've gravitated towards quite a bit is one that I made in 2018. And this is the Good Vibes shawl by um, Nadia Cretin Le Chen. I made this shawl out of uh, fine fish yarns in her Butterball colorway and um, hedgerow yarns out of a one of a kind colorway. And actually, this uh, the cream yarn is what I used for my oh look at this what a great combination it would make I used the cream yarn for this um, Westboro hat uh, oh look at that now what I was gonna tell you about the shawl is that this is a shawl that I like to have around in the summer because of the bright yellow but I'm starting to think that maybe I've got a winter combination happening here that I didn't uh, didn't expect so this is the Good Vibe Shawl. Um, I absolutely love this yellow that my friend Kate had brought me from uh, Fine Fish Yarns in her Butterball. It's her single ply Butterball uh, colorway. And then this Hedgerow Yarns, which is her Merino Light 500, um, is got, has just got these little speckles in it. And I really enjoyed making this shawl. 
Uh, I remember thinking when I was knitting at one point, is this going to work out? Are the numbers going to work out? And it worked out perfectly. Um, it was a lot of fun to make and I, I love the lightness of the shawl and I love the color. And I guess the color because it's a little bit brighter and whatever, I, it's, it's one that I've kept around in the summer uh, for you know the, a cool evening at a cottage or you know something like that. So if we were going places, I would usually pack this in my bag just in case I needed a shawl on the trip. So I've, I've really, really loved the shawl and gravitated towards it. And it's got a nice fit. It, it also, as I like the other ones, it has a nice sort of, you know, size to it so that you can easily wear it like this. So I don't tend to wear this one in the winter, but now that I realize that it suits my, my Westboro hat, the mohair edition, <laughs> uh, I might actually keep this out to wear with it. So that is another one that I gravitate towards. The sixth one that I wanted to show you that I gravitate towards was also a test knit. This was a test knit for Marsha Healy, who is also known as Fairy Little. And this is her Sorrento shawl. I did this in 2017. And it was such an enjoyable knit. It's a rather large shawl, and I've tended to wear this in the fall a lot for some reason. Um, and it's got quite a bit more bulk to it because it's really just about three skeins of yarn. The purple that I used here is Plucky Feet. I don't remember the colorway at all, but my friend Crystal had given that to me on one of our trips to Rhinebeck. And then the uh, sort of brownie color is uh, Artie Yarns in their Merino Cloud. And this here is a uh, hedgehog fibers in the urchin colorway. This was a really fun knit because there was a lot of uh, different things going on 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 each in each section. You had some striping, then you had a different kind of lace, and then you had some garter um, and different lace stitches, and then you ended with a little pico bind off which i really enjoy doing i know some people really don't like pico i do and i also like i cord bind offs <laughs> they're they're fun they're meditative um and uh yeah so this is one that i really enjoy and uh sh um i would say that marsha is great at making really large shawls and this is this is one of those one of those shawls and uh i just really enjoy this one too and it's got purples in it so I tend to gravitate towards purple as well. So the last shawl that I'm going to share with you today is one that I actually made this year. It's the Knit and Slide by Stephen West. So this was a bit of an it's about time kind of shawl because uh, I'm just trying to figure out well, one great thing about the shawl is you can never figure out which one's the right side and which one's the wrong side, which is fabulous. There is no right or wrong in this one. Um, neither is there in his, uh, in his uh, exploration station. So this is the knit and slide which I made in the spring. And I kept this around all summer because it's also got a lightness like the Good Vibes shawl. It's darker, moodier, um, but it was just a really nice light shawl to have um, in the summertime. And so it came on some of our, our road trips. Like I took it to a cottage. I took it when we went to Niagara Falls to have as something to wear in the evenings. And um, I, what I really like about it, I like the size, but I just find that these dangly bits <laughs> and there were some jokes around what these dangly bits could be but I just find it to be become, have become a very very elegant kind of shawl with with these sort of lacy bits there I just find it very elegant um, and it's very different from any of the other shawls with with this happening here and uh, I love the color um, so even though I only made it this spring, I have kept it around and wanted to wear it uh, quite often. So yeah, so this is the last of the shawls that I wanted to share with you today. Hopefully that was uh, an enjoyable experience for you. 
<laughs> it was a lot of fun uh, thinking about which shawls are the ones that I tend to go for all the time. And uh, so there you go, I wanted to share that with you and I promised for a while, so I finally did it. And that just about brings us to the end of the podcast. The last thing I wanted to mention to you was the giveaway. So, Mina Philip, known as the uh, Knitting Expat online, um, is a podcaster and designer. She's designed lots of things, started designing, I think about four years ago or so. And she has just come out with an amazing collection um, and has offered one up as a giveaway on the podcast. She has published an ebook called Cowls, what is it? Cowls Inspired by Persia. And it is essentially a collection of colorwork motifs inspired by Persian rugs. And um, sort of the, you know, the, the, the motifs, the colors of Persian rugs. And there are several different motifs. And the amazing thing about this book is that they are cowls that can, that you sort of create using those motifs with any gauge of yarn. And the collection is just stunning. It's a beautifully put together um, collection of motifs and cowls. And it's just a brilliant concept and a stunning piece of work. And I love the fact that um, Mina, who is uh, from Iran herself, has been inspired and has published something that is inspired by her, her culture. And in the collection, she has used family members as models. And I just, it's just so beautiful. So I have to say, it's just like, it almost brings me to tears. It's just so stunning. So she is giving a copy away to one of you. And so what I would like you to do, if you're interested in um, being eligible to win a copy of this ebook from Mina, is to comment below in YouTube. And your prompt is to um, comment below. If you don't want to answer the prompt, that's fine. You can just comment anything else. As usual, when I'm giving a giveaway, I don't tend to respond. I like to respond otherwise. So just know that you probably won't be hearing from me. Um, but your prompt is to sort of uh, talk about your relationship to color work. Is color work something you enjoy? Uh, is color work something you're intimidated by? Or you really want to try but you haven't so far? Um, if you do love color work, is there a, a favorite project or two of yours? Um, you know, if, is color work something you just don't even think about because you're just not remotely interested but you're kind of intrigued? Um, so yeah, so uh, comment below something related to color work. And as I said, if you don't want to uh, respond to the prompt, you're welcome to comment on anything else as well. And uh, so I have been um, putting some pictures as we spoke of Mina's, uh, of Mina's cows, of the beautiful motifs. And I'm still trying to decide which one I might make, um, but I'm just so, so taken by her, her piece of work. I think it's truly, truly beautiful. So congratulations, Mina. And yeah, so that brings us to the end of the podcast. Um, I didn't want to go on for too, too long. Um, and I, so I'll leave talking about books and, and other things until next time. And I'll just leave you with uh, some more beautiful footage of, of, uh, of nature from the walks uh, around that you saw some at the beginning and you'll see some now at the end. And uh, one thing I wanted to say is that uh, I tend to be a little bit, um, I don't know if, if I'm unpredictable, but I don't have a regular schedule for podcasting um, just because I try and fit it in when, uh, when I can, when the inspiration strikes. And so if you wanna have notifications of when I've podcasted, you might wanna click on the little bell below. Um, otherwise, uh, I'll see you when I see ya. And uh, I hope this podcast has found you well and um, I hope you've had a chance to enjoy a little bit of conversation, maybe a drink of something and some crafting with me. And we'll see you next time. And it's just the right time for me to stop because Yoda is screaming at the back door. <laughs>
So I'll leave you with some wonderful footage, friends, and until next time, take care. Stars have come in close just to see you was a force and they're gleaming. You must be dreamy, and the sun has said goodbye with a twinkle in his eye. He's left the ocean with sweet emotion. We go dancing in the rain, riding on a midnight train, away so slowly. And the moon is looking down on the sleepy side of town, and he's so lonely. Sleepy side of town, and he's so lonely.